Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For this, I'm gonna be participating in this exciting challenge called the Industrial Design 7 Question Challenge proposed by Jim Design and Design Plus Morna. So I'm gonna share with you guys a little bit of my vision about design. I hope you like this content and enjoy watching the videos of so many other talent designers participating in this initiative. So check out the description box below to find all the channels involved in the Industrial Design 7 Question Challenge. Question number one. Industrial design is a fairly uncommon field. How did you discover it? Well, I've been drawing since I was four years old, so I always wanted something related to that as a profession. My first contact with the design was through a friend who worked as a mechanical engineer in the automotive industry. He showed me some automotive design magazines and it was there that I really decided my future. Until then, I was thinking of doing fine arts or architecture. Question number two. How do you explain your job to those who don't know about ID? Well, I am a design lecturer and I think my job is a way to guide people to achieve their life's purposes through the professional experience I got in the last 20 years designing cars, motorcycles, fireplaces, sneakers, kitchen appliances, furniture and so on. Question number three. What inspirations have developed your ID style? Well, I really like Dieter Renz, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, Hajime Sorayama, Virgilio Martinez and Jorge Hoca. Dieter Renz is like a Moses for me. He wrote the 10 principles of good design. All designers should be at least know all of these principles and use them as an evaluation checklist after developing an idea for a product. Frank Lloyd Wright is a genius of architecture because of this way of creating spaces according to their location and purpose. He is considered the creator of the open space concept. It means that to create environments, it is not necessary to have walls between them. It is disruptive way of thinking about the shape and function of a space. Hajime Sorayama is the master of fantasy art that makes robots with human sensuality. I consider his work timeless. Virgilio Martinez is a chef of gastronomy, but his work in the kitchen is so visionary that I consider him a real designer in the way of thinking. He uses local ingredients in a very creative way. Each dish on his menu is planned according to a region and altitude of Peru's geography. And last but not least, Jordi Roca. He is one of the world's greatest Patsehi chef. I think that he creates the most creative and unusual desserts with the super simple ingredients. What do they all have to do with my ID style? Well, none of them influenced my style or aesthetic aspect of my design, but it influenced my way of thinking about design in the way of transforming the user experience into something fascinating that electrifies the sensations, whether by taste, sight, touch, smell or hearing. The designer should work with all these sensory media. Question number four. Which company would you love to design a product for? I would definitely like to design salt and pepper grinders for Peugeot Savours or make a coffee maker for Nespresso. That's because I love to cook and I'm really addicted to espresso coffee. I've designed some grinders and coffee makers, but it is just for fun, nothing for a specific project. Question number five. What is your go-to industrial design program and why? Well, although I really like to draw with pencil, paper and some markers, I became an expert in digital rendering. And I will take the opportunity to answer the question everyone asks me here. 
What software do you use? I only use Adobe Photoshop because it's the most used tool in automotive design studios. And despite being a software with a lot of features, I basically use a half dozen specific functions like brushes, paths, layers and some filters. Question number six. What do you dislike most about industrial design? Well, I would say ego and vanity, definitely. The designer is an employee like any other within a company. The designer, driven by ego and vanity, designs a product, a vehicle, for example, thinking of himself as a consumer of that product. This is a big mistake. In my career, I have seen designers arguing with customers because the customer simply didn't like the design thing he had proposed. This is totally wrong. A good designer has to be a great observer and understand what the consumer wants. And when I worked as a motorcycle designer, I put myself in the position of my customers in many projects. I tried to understand his needs with that product as much as possible. The reason why he bought a specific motorcycle, whether it was for work or for leisure or if it was uh, supporting themselves or merely a status symbol. And question number seven, what makes an industrial design good? Well, I know it sounds like cliche to say this, but it's evident that the balance between form and function Regardless of whether it is a vehicle, a smartphone, a vacuum cleaner, or even for UI UX interface, the product must satisfy the customer's taste and be functional. There is no purpose in making a beautiful product that has no quality of execution and doesn't meet the specific needs of the customers, as well as there is no purpose in doing something outstanding in functionality, something that doesn't attract the eyes of the customer. People don't buy a product for its useful things first. This is the second or third stage. People buy first for aesthetic and visual appeal and then for the status of to belong to a social group or for the benefits and facilities that the product offers. The customers doesn't much care about characteristics because they are very technical terms most of the time. And that was the last question for today. I hope you enjoyed and as I said, check out the description box below and take a look at their experience about design. I'll see you next time. Bye.